What's up guys? Today we're checking out a video from Yahoo Finance. The Tesla earnings report is coming out in a few hours today. I'm going to cover it on the channel, so make sure to subscribe for that. But today we're checking out a Yahoo Finance video. Uh, Tesla earnings. Here are three things to watch. So let's check it out together. Tesla gearing up for second quarter earnings tomorrow after the bell. The stock skyrocketing more than 55% in the last three months. Here with the top things to watch, we want to bring in Yahoo Finance's Proz Subramania. And Proz, you got your eye on Proz, three things good old that we need to be looking for in this report tomorrow. What are they? Yeah, so three things I'm watching here, and, and, and analysts, of course, is uh, first off, gross margin trough, the cyber truck, and also margin, margin I'm sorry, expansion of the factory. So let's start off with, with the margin trough here. So a lot of analysts believe that this quarter might be the low point in terms of Tesla's margin, which has been the, you know, the envy of the industry. They hit around 19% uh, automotive gross margin last quarter. So people expected to dip again in Q2, but then possibly rise later in the year. Hopefully for investors, they'll hear whether Tesla indicates that that is the case. Uh, secondly, Cybertruck. So yes. Okay, yes, yes. Margins, short-term margins, they go up and down 90%, 20%. 18% will it be 17% that all doesn't matter because here's what the other automakers you guys seen this already if you follow the channel pay attention to the bottom right this is Ford's EV division the model E Ford's EV division at the bottom right EBITDA margins 40% usually last quarter my okay negative 40% last quarter negative 102% so even if Tesla drops a little bit to 18%, 17%, even 15%. That doesn't even matter. 10%. They're still far ahead of the competition. Yesterday, sorry, over the weekend, we saw that Tesla tweeted out a picture of that Cybertruck and that first one produced out of the Giga Austin facility. That's a big deal because, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Tesla was sort of two years late in bringing that, that truck on. But right now, it seems like they are actually starting to produce in low quantities. Let's see what they say in the earnings statement and possibly in the call after. Is this just a pre-verification build? Is this truck actually gonna be delivered to a customer? We'll see about that. And finally, expansion, right? So Tesla here, you know, they probably have around 2 million, 2.5 million of uh, tr uh, vehicle capacity right now. They wanna hit 20 million by the end of the decade. That's gonna need more factories. So Tesla's been talking recently, we've seen them in France and India talking about expansion there, just doing some sort of operational activity there. And then also mm -hmm. uh, the journal reported yesterday that Tesla has been, wants to expand Giga Berlin by double to increase that capacity by double so so yeah tesla is, is going to expand in all their factories berlin austin um, china they're all going to be expanded upon they're all going to have more capacity so um, a lot of people well a lot of analysts just look at what they could do today and they're like this is how many they can produce they're constantly expanding their factories and they're constantly um um, building more, you know, building more real, building more um, factories and, and pushing it out further and further on the same amount of property. Like they're they're just building it out more and more because um, they they do purchase like a lot of the land around the initial factory, so they can expand. So they're going to expand all their factories. China, Berlin, and Austin are getting expansions, and the Mexico factory. I'm not sure if it started yet. Um, we still haven't seen any drone footage on that yet i don't know if they broke ground but mexico is coming to build the cheaper model coming real soon mexico they announced that and they're probably going to announce something in india and france and maybe even canada real soon we'll hopefully hear more about their long-term plans on how they how they plan to build up to 20 million vehicles by the end of the decade uh, Pras, going back to the cyber truck i mean you know yes there's a lot of excitement around this delivery event that's supposed to happen this fall but the initial announcement was made back in 2019, right? Did I get my years right? 2019. If you think about mm -hmm. where the EV truck competition is right now, who are who are they going for? Who who's likely to to go for the Tesla? How can they compete when other competitors have already come online with their cars? That's really good. Okay, so let me uh, let me answer that question real real quick. Uh, I kind of thought that that this would happen, so let me pull up the competition. Okay, this is what the competition has. That she's kind of like, what what's gonna happen? How can they compete? Like the other the other companies already started. You know, how can Tesla compete with these other companies? Let's check out the F one fifty Q one F one fifty first quarter sales four thousand. 
291, okay? <laughs> they delivered, they sold 4,291 units. That's it in Q1, okay? So um, I don't know. If you think that's a lot, that's, that's nothing compared to what Tesla can uh, eventually produce. This F-150 has been out for a while now. So, and then let's check the other, the other competition, the Rivian. Okay, so right now, Ford makes the Lightning. Um, and the Rivian uh, is the other pickup competition. The Rivian vehicle, factory. Um, uh, so the factory gate, let's see the delivery, 7,946. And as you know, Rivian's been out for a while. They lose money on every sale. So... This is the competition. This is what Tesla has to catch up to. I think Tesla is going to destroy these numbers real quick. <laughs> in the next, like, six months to a year, they're going to destroy these. They'll be making these in a, a week or a day, um, these numbers. So um, Ford F-150, and they lose, remember, they lose their negative 100% on the each sale and they just lowered the price of the f-150 so that's gonna go even lower we're gonna see an even lower margin so they're already negative they're already spending double the amount to produce the the cars as they're selling and it's gonna go even lower so i don't know how they're gonna sustain this these losses um We'll see. They're going to have to ramp production to try to get out of this. Um, they said by 2025 they should be profitable, but it's going to be tough. So this is the competition, lady. This is what uh, that's what Tesla has to compete with, and those numbers are minuscule. Mini <laughs> tiny. Those numbers are tiny. Cybertruck kind of occupies its own space in between the F-150 Lightning, which is which is a work truck and something of an adventure truck, mostly a work truck type of everyday kind of vehicle. And then the Rivian, which is purely, in my opinion, hardcore adventure people going out, uh, overlanding, camping, all that stuff that coastal types of people will do. I think that Cybertruck occupies that middle ground where it can actually be used for both work truck type of activities, but also lifestyle and, and sort of the, the adventure travel set there. I think that's where the Tesla kind of Cybertruck occupies that space. And, I, and we saw Ford sort of reacting here maybe to the news that Tesla was bringing out this Cybertruck uh, in possibly limited fashion in this quarter with those deep price cuts of the F-150 Lightning just uh, yesterday. I'm not, I'm not saying that's because of that, but it, it could be, it's not, it's not in, in coincidental that both of these things happened in the last two days. Yeah, the, uh, well, the competition certainly is heating up in the electric pickup space. I'm with Akiko, though. I don't know who the heck is going to be buying this <laughs> Cybertruck. I'm not sold. I feel like the design is just way too futuristic for me. But we'll see. There's always people out there that are willing to buy these things. All right, Pro Supermanian, thanks. How, okay, how do these people not know this? Like, they cover this stock, right? This is their job. They cover a ton of different stocks. But how do you not know that there's 1.5 million reservations? You know, like, she... <laughs> When they give their opinions on, like, I don't know who's going to buy this. Like, they're, they're not going to sell. No one's going to buy this. There's 1.5 million reservations. You can look it up with a simple Google, Google search. How many people are interested in the Tesla Cybertruck? And it'll pop right up. Proz is there. He knows. Um, but they ran out of time. But there are 1.5 million reservations. And there's going to be a lot more reservations when this thing starts hitting the streets. People start seeing them in person. All over town, they're going to be wraps. They're going to have, like, decals on them. I'm going to get all, ki all kinds of accessories for mine. I reserved mine um, really early on. I think that on the day, and I was still 160000 on the on the list. So I'm 160000 on the list. I don't know about variants and stuff, so it might be sooner or later that I get mine. But there's a lot of people interested in the Cybertruck. Um, the competition is not heating up. The competition is rolling out very slowly. They've had a lot of time to uh, to scale, but they, they, just, they just can't. So um, Legacy Auto is in big, big trouble when it comes to the um, EV market and the future of, uh, of cars and vehicles. They're in big trouble. To make that transition from gas to electric, they're going to have to lose a bunch of money their sales of the gas cars are going to plummet. They're in huge, huge trouble. Tesla is um, in a really good spot. So the te the price of Tesla stock has surged today. It's at two ninety eight. Um, it's uh, July nineteenth uh, in the what's it called eleven o'clock in the morning. So two ninety eight pre prior two ninety seven prior to the earnings call that's coming up 
in a few hours from now. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please, guys, sub to the channel. These are my numbers here. We have 130 subscribers. Views are going up, which is great. But a lot of you guys are not subbed. Um, let's see the audience here. 95% of you guys are not subscribed, which is terrible numbers. <laughs> But it's okay. It's a new channel. So if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. 4% subscribed. And here's something interesting. 100% male audience. So guys, please subscribe to the channel. And check out the age the age groups here. Um, I found this interesting. I don't know if you guys will too. So um, the age of everyone watching is basically like 34 and up. So we got 65 plus. We got 55 plus. 45, 35 plus. We got no one under... 24 years old watching we got all older audience uh you guys are my age um so please subscribe to the channel that's very interesting numbers i've never seen that before i've been uh, i have a lot of tests i have a lot of youtube channels that i've never seen that in my life so that's pretty interesting so please subscribe to the channel let's hit a thousand subscribers stay tuned watch the next video because i'm going to keep dropping videos all day so stay tuned and subscribe